video is about the cranial bones of the skull. First of all, we have the frontal bone and the suture that is located between the frontal bone and the parietal bone is called the coronal suture. Then we have the paired parietal bones and the suture that is visible between the two parietal bones is called the sagittal suture. Then at the base of the skull we have the occipital bone and the suture between the occipital and parietal bones is called the lamnoid suture. And then on each side we have the temporal bone and the suture between the temporal bone and the parietal bone is called the squamous suture. Now we're going to take a look at each bone individually. This is the frontal bone. We can see we have the frontal bone at the front here. This is it separated out from the skull. There are a few features. Right above the eye, we have the superior, the supraorbital notch. If we look at this one over here, we can see that it's actually a foramen. So this is the supraorbital supra foramen. We have the glabella, which is the area in between. And then we have the squamous portion, which is the flat portion. We'll turn this skull sideways so we can better get a better look at the parietal bone, which is right here. And this is the parietal bone here. Not real a lot going on with that. Then we have the temporal bone down here. So this is the temporal bone. First, we have the zygomatic process of the temporal bone that is here. Then we also have the external auditory canal right here. If we take a medial view, here we have the petrous portion, which contains the auditory ossicles and the vestibular and cochlear complex. And then we also have the internal auditory meatus right here. If we take an inferior view, we can see that here we have styloid process. And we also have the carotid canal right here. At the base of the skull, we have the occipital bone, which is right here. On the occipital bone, its most distinguishing feature is the foramen magnum, where the uh, spinal cord passes through. On each side of that, we have the occipital condyles. Then also, we have the external occipital protuberance, which can probably be better seen on this skull here. On each side of the external occipital protuberance, we have the superior nuchal line, and then a little bit lower down, we have the inferior nuchal line. We also have the basilar region, which is where the occipital bone articulates with the sphenoid bone. The ethnoid bone, which is located in here, we can see that we have the crystal gala, which is where the dura matter attaches. We can also see that we have the middle plate, which is the perpendicular plate of the ethnoid bone. And if we take a superior view, we can see that we have these holes that are each side of the crystal gala is the, called the cribriform plate, which is the pathway for the cranial nerves number one. Also on the ethnoid bone, we have the superior and middle nasal conchi. It's kind of hard to define where those actually are. Then last of all, we have the sphenoid bone. And the sphenoid bone is called the keystone of the cranium because every other cranial bone articulates with the sphenoid bone. We have the greater wings here and here. And we have the lesser wings here and here. We also have this depression here, which is called the cella tersica, which is where the pituitary gland sits. We have the optic canal, which runs through here and here. Then we also have the superior orbital fissure, which is 
right here. We have the Freeman Rotundum right here. And then we also have the medial and lateral pterygoids.